Dan, you're at, you're at the Harleypool game and, and yeah. now you're at Croft Park for hopefully another fairy tale game for Blythe. How does it feel to be at Croft Park for this? Well, this is this is proper football. This is wonderful. I loved the the Friday night at Hartlepool was great. Um, the fact that Blythe were absolutely battered for for half an hour and then come back into it. Stephen Turnbull scores the goal, which Alan Shearer did describe, but can confirm as the greatest FA Cup free kick he'd ever seen. I think Stephen tells everybody about once every ten minutes. And then Jarrett Rivers got got the winner. Brilliant story. Wonderful night. And you know, why can't? Blythe do it again. I know Birmingham come here, they're, they're in quite a good form now under Gary Rowett, but the pitch looks like the sort of pitch that's perfect for an FA Cup upset. Not saying anything about the, the groundsman at Groff Park, but it, it, it's got that sort of bobble factor and it's, it's certainly taking a stud, I believe, footballers would tell you. So so why can't we have another upset? Yeah. And, and for you working for the BBC, how's it coming to somewhere like Croft Park and being able to go in the dressing room, talk to the manager before the game and, and different to going to a Premier League club and that it, sort of thing? Yeah, it is very different. I mean, I, support a, I supported a non-league side in Crawley Town who then sort of moved up through divisions and, and currently, you know, still working in, in, in lower league football. But when you go to Premier League grounds, the way that they operate with the media these days it's, it's very structured understandable because they get so many requests but that's what's so great about coming to a club like Blythe or you know, even Hartlepool were great with us and, and many other teams as well in the FA Cup just allow you to open a door here there go and speak to the manager speak to the you know the captain speak to Stephen Turnbull and have that incredible access which I think if you're watching a programme like Football Focus makes you you get into it you, you feel what the club is, is really about and you get that warmth and the just that really warm welcome to a club. I think that really helps. And the neutral can get won over by, by that sort of access, I think. And, and Blythe are a club who've done things really well this season. And I'm not saying I desperately want Blythe to win because I'll get in trouble with Birmingham <laughs> fans, but I think most of the neutrals out there would think, well, let's chase the story. And the story would be another fantastic Blythe FA Cup run. Sure. And, and how are you expecting the game to go today? <sighs> well... I put that question to Chris Waddle and Danny Higginbottom and they gave the old footballer's response, which is true, it's, it's all about how it starts. Blythe started very badly against Hartlepool but got away with it, but I think in, in a game like this, particularly at home, it makes a bit of a difference as well. If they can just keep things steady, make sure that they don't get overrun by Birmingham, who certainly have the superior quality in terms of players, the longer they go without conceding a goal, the, the better chance there is of, of an upset. And then you get, you, know, you get into 60, 70 minutes and it's still nil-nil. Anything can happen and, and who knows, we might have another little bit of FA Cup history on the go and, and Blythe get into the fourth round again. And finally, uh, you say, you know, if you've got 60 minutes in nil-nil, who knows what could happen. Any potential match winners out there? Well, I still love the fact that Mr Rivers works in his mum's news agent, so I think it's one of my favourite stories of all time. Um, and the Turnbull brothers are a great tale. Uh, obviously Stephen here and, and Philip playing for Gateshead I know that the family are completely split this afternoon I think his dad and his, his brother are here and his mum and his sister have gone to watch um, it's the other way around is it um, so the, the family are split over the country but we've, we've spoken to him a lot on the BBC and, and they're both two great characters they both love their football they're both still playing and I, I imagine the sort of players who will play until they're sort of 60 or 70 and a, a tale somewhere in the Turnbull family would be a nice one this afternoon I think